In this series of videos, we're going to talk about bank reconciliations. In the first video, I'm going to explain what bank reconciliations are, why they're important to businesses, why companies need to do them, and why accountants need to do them. Uh, in the next couple of videos after that, we're just going to run through a bank reconciliation, we're going to reconcile the books, and uh, uh, prepare the related journal entries. So that's the focus of these videos. Uh, the first thing, though, I want to explain is what a bank reconciliation is and, and why we need one. So um, cash is a very, very important asset of any company. If a company runs out of cash, can't pay their bills, they're bankrupt, they're dead meat. And so keeping track of cash needs to be a very high priority for any company and any company's accountant. Now luckily, uh, in order to secure cash, most companies don't keep cash in their own vaults, they don't keep them uh, under mattresses, they don't keep them in the till, they put them in banks. And so because of this, we actually get two records for cash. Most accountants have access to two records of cash. The first record of cash is the company's own T account. So they'll have a T account for cash, and of course they'll just keep track of their debits and credits through cash. And so on any given day, they should be able to look at the bottom of this T account and say our cash is whatever number, X number. And they can figure that out. Notice I put it on the debit side because cash is of course a debit account. Uh, so that's wonderful, and the company keeps its own record of cash. Meanwhile, they've been depositing and withdrawing cash from their bank account, and their bank keeps a record of their cash. So their bank sends them every month this piece of paper that we all receive too. I assume everybody watching this video has a bank account, and the bank sends you a piece of paper called the bank, oh my writing is so bad, statement. Look at that. Um, and on the bank statement, it'll say, oh, here's all your deposits, here's all your withdrawals. And then at the bottom, and actually usually at the top as well, it says, here's your cash. I'll put the letter Y to signify the amount of cash on the bank statement. Now, if I look at my cash T account on a chosen date, say May 31st, and I look at a bank statement for the month of May, so for the month ending May 31st, you might think, well, theoretically, these should line up. These should be matching. My cash on my T account and the cash on the bank statement should line up. But I'm here to tell you in reality, they almost never line up. And in accounting class, they'll never, ever, ever line up because uh, then there's nothing, there's no work to be done. So these amounts, you might think, oh, my cash on May 31st should match what's on the bank statement. They almost are never, ever going to be equal. That's where we accountants come in. It's okay that they're different. In fact, they're, they're going to be different every month. But it's only okay if we, the accountant, can explain the differences. If we understand why they're different. The key things that, uh, the key reasons that the cash T account might be different from the bank statement, um, well, I'm going to explain them now. So the first reason is, let's say I write a check right at the end of May. So on May 30th, I write a check. May 30th, I write a check and I pay my utilities bill. So my, my hydro company or my utilities company sends me a bill. On May 30th, I you know get a envelope, a stamp, I lick the stamp, I lick the envelope, I put a check in the mail to pay the utilities bill. So on May 30th, I put the check in the mail. Uh, May 31st, the check gets delivered. Uh, June 1st, the check is received. And on June 2nd, they deposit the check. Oh, sorry about my writing. They deposit the check on there. Well, I hope you're able to see what's going to happen here. On my T account, before May 31st, on May 30th, all I've recorded somewhere is a credit to cash that, yeah, I, I wrote a check, let's say for $100 to pay my, my hydro bill, my utilities bill. So I write a check for $100 on May 30th, it'll be in this T account, credit cash, $100. On the bank statement, though, that $100 will not appear. The reason is, the bank doesn't find out I wrote the check until June 2nd they don't learn about the check until the next month. This is one reason 
that the cash T account might be different from the bank statement. This is called an outstanding check. Similarly, we can have the other things we've recorded in our cash T account that the bank doesn't know about yet. For example, if money's come in and I go, oh, money came in, debit cash. If I don't take it to the bank right away, the bank's not going to know about it. When that situation happens, it's called a deposit in transit because I go debit cash on my side of the books, but the bank is still waiting for the money. I'm, I'm waiting to bring it to the bank. So we call that a deposit in transit. If you want to be casual, you can call it an outstanding deposit, and I think that's fine. So those are the two key reasons that my cash T account might be different from the bank statement. I have checks that have yet to clear. In other words, outstanding checks. And I have deposits where I haven't put the money in the bank yet or it's waiting to be processed in some way. And that's called an outstanding deposit or a deposit in transit. Those are things that might be on my T account that won't be on the bank statement. There's also another reason that the bank balance can be different from my cash balance. And the main one, and probably anyone who has a bank account can relate to this, is that at the end of the month, at least when I get my bank statement, I look at it, I'm always surprised right at the bottom, they sneak in that line about bank charges. I never know if it's going to be 5 bucks one month, 10 bucks another, 20 another if I use my, my debit card a lot. Um, but I'm never sure about that bank charge amount. Well, companies also don't know their bank charges, well, depending on the plan they have, some plans you know, but a lot of companies won't know their bank charges until they get the bank statement. So that's going to be a number that appears on the bank statement, but there's no way to know about it on the cash T account. Other things appearing on the bank statement that won't appear on the cash T account, things like interest revenue. You know, if I get $10 in uh, charges, I might get like 25 cents of interest on my bank account. Well, even still, they're, they're adding 25 cents to my cash, but that's something I won't have recorded just as normal business transactions. So that's a debit to cash that's on the bank statement, but it's something I'm missing in my cash T account. There will be other items that we'll look at when we work through the problem that are items that appear on the bank statement, but not on the cash T account. Examples are, outstand uh, not outstanding checks, pardon me, uh, uh, bank collections, that's where the bank collects money on our behalf from our customers. So we say, hey, customer, you can pay your bill at the bank, put it in the bank account for us. Well, it might be something that we miss on our T account, but the bank catches. One other item that you're going to uh, learn about in the next video is called an NSF check. The letters NSF, I'll just write them up here, NSF stand for non-sufficient funds. And that means somebody wrote you a check and you went, all right, debit cash, because they wrote me a check for, let's say, $500. So you went, debit cash, $500. You put it in your bank account. The bank statement comes back and it says, you know what, they didn't have the money. They wrote you a check for $500, but they didn't have $500. So we got to take that $500 back out of your bank account. That might be something that appears on the bank statement, but again, not in the cash T account. So bank reconciliations are all about us as accountants explaining the differences between what's appearing in our cash T account and what's appearing in the bank statement. And by being able to explain the differences, we understand our cash situation and remember it's important to know where our cash is going where it's coming from and, and this external document this bank statement that comes from a bank comes from a trustworthy source is a great way to be sure about our cash balance to be sure that we've got it right and to be sure that we're not missing something so every company does monthly bank uh, reconciliations and if they don't they should every company I've ever worked with has uh, and it's something that you absolutely need to learn to do to be a good accountant and something you absolutely should be learning in just about any introductory accounting class. So in our next video, we're going to run through bank reconciliations. Examples of bank reconciliations. Ah.